So today we're going to be looking at the continuous probability distribution, which is also known as the rectangular distribution, and you'll usually hear it called this name instead. So the rectangular distribution is a continuous random variable which has a probability density function which is described here. And it's really important that we understand that this is continuous, so it is similar to the normal distribution and it is different from the binomial distribution because the binomial distribution is discrete so it can only take on certain terms whereas a continuous, distri a continuous distribution can take on any terms in a given range. So here, the range that we're looking at is between A and B. We can be asked to find the expectation and variance of this using these two formulas here, which are not given to us in the formula booklet. So we have to try and make sure that we remember these. So for the expectation, it's going to be a half of A plus B, remembering that A and B are here and here in the probability density function and for the variance it's going to be a 12th of b minus a all squared. Now sometimes we might find that in the exam instead of being given it as a probability density function we may just be given a drawing so we may be given something that looks a bit like this and again the general um, diagram for this would be a rectangle and it would go from A to B, something like that. It might come up in the exam where it's drawn for you instead of being given as a probability density function. So we're going to have a look at a couple of examples. So the continuous random variable X has a probability density function and we're given it here. Now please notice that it doesn't mention the rectangular distribution here at all, but we can tell it's a rectangular distribution question because we have a, the same probability given within a set range and it's zero otherwise, which is the same setup as what we have up here. So the first thing that we're asked to do is find the value of K. Well, a good thing to start off with is to quickly sketch out the distribution that we're looking at. So we have a rectangle between one and six. So that is our rectangle going from between one and six. And because we are talking about a probability uh, density function, we know that the area of this is going to add up to give us one. Okay, just like the area underneath the normal distribution curve adds up to one, the area of our rectangle will always add up to one. So we can easily find the width of our rectangle because the difference between one and six is five. And if we know that the area is one, that means that the height must be one over five. And that is our K value from this here. So find the value of K, K is one over five. It's one over the distance between our two X values. B, we have to sketch the graph. Well, nicely, I've already done that here. So this is my answer to part B. Part C, find the probability of X being less than two. Now, like I was talking before, we're going to be using the areas of the rectangle to find the probabilities. So if that is my area that is less than two, I'm wanting to find my red area here. So it has a width of one. Sorry about that. It has a width of one and it has a height of a fifth, which gives us a fifth. So we could be asked to find separate areas. So we could be asked to find the probability that X is less than 1.5 and the probability that X is more than five. So if I have 1.5 here, that is my 1.5. I'm colouring this bottom bit here. And then more than 5 would give us this area here. Now obviously more than 5 also includes values that are bigger than 6, but these are going to be values that are over here, which we know have a probability of 0 because they're 0 otherwise. So we have these two yellow regions here. 
which means that we have 0 0.5, because that's the width of this first rectangle, times a fifth, plus 1, because that's the width of this rectangle here, times a fifth. So I can pop that into my normal calculator part here. So I'm going to have 0 0.5 times a fifth plus one times a fifth. And we end up with 0 0.3. So we're also asked here to find this. Now this can also be described, this part here can also be described as the magnitude. So sometimes instead of showing you the symbol, it might use the word magnitude. So we're trying to find where the magnitude is less than three. And that means that the size of what we're looking at is less than three. So if I was to extend my graph here a little bit more, I'd be looking at between minus 3 and 3. And like we were talking about before with this bit here, all this part here has no height to it and it's falling under this zero otherwise category. So the actual area that we are looking for is this bit here. So I have a width of 3. Sorry, I have a width of 2 because we're only going from three to one. So I have a width of two and I have a height of one over five, which gives me two over five. We could be given a question where we have different things going on. So here, instead of an X in the middle, we have an X minus one. So we have to think about how, we'd, we, how we would move that usually. So we've got two is less than X minus one is less than three. So we're gonna to have to add one on to both of these end values. So that would end up giving us the probability that three, adding one onto three gives us Four, and because we've moved this one now, all we're left with in the middle is x. So we're looking at the probability that 3 is less than x is less than 4. So we're looking at this region here. You can see that I keep drawing it onto my diagram. You can do separate diagrams for each one if you would like. So we have a width of 1 again and a height of a fifth again, which gives us a fifth. Now finally, we're asked to find the mean and standard deviation. So we're looking back up here at these formulas. So for the expectation, the E of X, the mean, they're all the same thing. It's gonna be a half of A plus B, a half of one plus six, which gives us 3.5 for our mean. For the standard deviation, well, we don't have a formula for that, but we do have a formula for the variance. So we can find that and then we can square root it. So if we have var of x, which is 1 over 12, lots of b minus a, so 6 minus 1 squared, that gives us 25 over 12. I haven't answered the question yet though because it was asking for the standard deviation. So I need to now write that the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 25 over 12. And I can put this into my calculator, square root of 25 over 12, which when I change it into a decimal, gives me 1.44. So if you would like to, you can now pause the video and give the now you try on the next page a go. 
Okay, so hopefully you've taken the time to pause the video and give the Now You Try a uh, go. So here, we're not actually having to find out K this time. K's already been given to us, our probability. And we can double check that that works because the difference between minus two and four is six. And yes, we've got our value here, which is one over six. So straight away this time, we're just asked to sketch the graph. So sketching the graph, this time we can't just do our axis like this because we need to go down to minus two. So instead we have to have our F axis here a bit further in and we're going from minus two up to four and remember it looks like a rectangle. And the probability here is going to be a sixth, like it says here. And remember, it's zero otherwise, so there's no probability here and there's no probability up here. So for part B, we're asked to find the probability that Y is less than zero. So they've used Y here. So yes, I'm talking about the same thing. So Y is less than zero would be this area here. So I have a width of two and a height of a sixth, which gives me a third or two sixths. Similarly to the example, we're starting uh, to look at two different areas put together. So we're looking at less than minus 0 0.5. So that's going to be this area here. Remember, like I said before, you can do these on separate diagrams. So minus 0 0.5 there and bit too far up sorry and greater than two so if that's my line for two I'm looking at this area here as well so I'm trying to find all my green area that I've put on there so the width of this first bit here between minus two and not point minus not point five is going to have a width of 1.5 times a sixth plus a width of two times a sixth and again, we can put that in our calculator, 1.5 times a sixth plus two times a sixth gives us seven over 12 as a fraction, or you could write it as a decimal to three significant figures, a minimum of three significant figures for anything. Remember, another word for this part here in part D is magnitude. So we're trying to find the magnitude where the magnitude is less than one. So that means that we're looking at between one and minus one. This time, all of that is part of our actual function. We have no parts of that which are zero. So we have a width of two. We have a height of a sixth which again gives us a third. For part E, we are going to have to rearrange this slightly. I'm going to have to go into yellow, sorry. We're going to have to rearrange this slightly. So we're starting off with the probability that minus one is less than Y plus two is less than three. This time, because we've got plus two, we need to do the opposite to move it out. So we need to minus two off both ends. So we're looking at the probability that minus three is less than y is less than one. So minus three is down here. One is here. So we're looking at this area here and this little bit here, which doesn't give us anything because remember it's zero otherwise. So that means that this bit here between minus three and minus two doesn't actually add any probability. So we have a width from minus two to one, which gives us a width of three and a height of a sixth, which gives us a half. Now, finally, again, we're going to have to find the mean and standard deviation. Remember, you are not given these in the exam. You have to remember them. So my expected value is going to be a half of a plus b, a half of minus two plus four, 
which gives us one. And you have to remember that this is always going to end up being in the middle of our function here, okay? Um, so minus two plus four gives us two, a half of two gives us one. For the standard deviation, we're gonna to have to start off with the variance. So the variance of y, which is a 12 of b minus a. Now we have to be careful this time because it's minus a, which is minus two. So it's gonna be minus minus two squared, which gives us six here. Four minus minus two gives us six squared, gives us 36. 36 divided by 12 gives us three. And again, we haven't quite finished yet. We need to write the standard deviation, which is gonna be the square root of three, which to three uh, significant figures gives us 1.73. So that is how we answer rectangular distribution questions where we're given the probability density function first and have to draw the graph. Remember, sometimes you may have to be starting off with the graph uh, straight away and therefore you're using that graph to find certain probabilities or the mean and standard deviation.